The year is 1814 in Hartford, Connecticut. Alice Cogswell is playing outside. Alice is a nine-year-old girl who is deaf. She lost her hearing at the age of two due to spotted fever and later lost her speech. Although there were other children, she was playing in the dirt alone. A man named Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, who was Alice's neighbor, was watching her out a window from his family's house nearby. He noticed that she was playing in the dirt all alone and wanted to do something. Gallaudet, not knowing sign language, wanted to communicate with Alice. He pointed to his hat and wrote H-A-T in the dirt. Alice understood him, and Gallaudet wanted to teach her more. He talked to Alice's father about teaching her sign language. As he got to know Alice and her father, he realized Alice was intelligent despite the fact that she could not hear, speak, or have the same learning opportunities as other kids. Alice Cogswell made history at nine by inspiring Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet to create a school for the deaf. This moment created a movement for the deaf community. Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet's founding of the American School for the Deaf in 1817 produced turning points for the hearing impaired community by giving the deaf the opportunity to learn, teach, communicate, and connect with each other using American Sign Language. This first interaction has made a difference not only to Alice Cogswell, but also kids like her for the last 200 years. Gallaudet was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on December 10th, 1787. He moved to Hartford, Connecticut with his family when he was young. At the age of 14, he got accepted into Yale College and graduated in 1805. Although he studied many different subjects, he wanted to pursue in ministry until he met Mason and Alex Cogswell. Dr. Mason Cogswell lived in Hartford, Connecticut with his daughter, Alice Cogswell. Alice lost her hearing at the age of two due to spotted fever. Mason Cogswell was unhappy that his daughter couldn't get proper education and was worried about her future. Cogswell found out that in Europe and France, they were teaching deaf students some sort of sign. When Cogswell and Goldette met, Cogswell asked Goldette if he could help find a way to communicate with kids like Alice. He also asked if he could help found a school to help other kids like Alice learn to communicate. He said that he would cover the funds for the school. Goldet agreed to do this after feeling inspired by the day outside with Alice. Goldet agreed and flew to Europe to study the teaching methods and signs. When he reached Europe, Goldet tried to learn the Braidwoods method used in London. He had no access to learning the teaching method and made his way over to France. As he arrived, Goldet met Laurent Clare, who was a deaf Frenchman who taught at the Royal Institution for the Deaf. Lauren Claire lost his hearing and smell at the age of one when he fell into a fireplace. Claire and Gaudet bonded as Claire was able to teach him French sign language. He even kept a diary of some of their conversations when Gaudet was teaching him how to write in English. Gaudet stayed in France for around two years until he had returned back to the U.S. He asked Claire if he would like to travel back with him and help found a school for the deaf. Claire agreed and traveled back with Gallaudet to America to help with the school. On the return voyage, Gallaudet learned more sign language from Claire, while Claire learned more English from Gallaudet. They arrived back to America in 1816 at a time where society was ready for a turning point in deaf education. At that time, people valued their religion and wanted everyone to be educated about religious beliefs. They also valued literacy and wanted to make sure everyone could understand how to read and write. Many people also cared a lot about philanthropy and wanted to give back and help society for the better. Claire, Gaudet, and Cogswell were now ready to shape history of deaf education forever. The American School for the Deaf was established in 1817 in the Bennett City Hotel in Hartford, Connecticut. The school became the first recipient of state aid in America when the Connecticut General Assembly awarded its first annual grant to the school in 1819. The U.S. Congress awarded the school a land grant in 1820. It was the first instance of federal aid in elementary and secondary special education, making history again. The mother school, as the school came to be called, drew attention from different states all throughout the U.S. One of the most popular areas was a small island called Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard already had a large population of deaf people. Most of them already had science that they used to communicate at home, which they brought to the school. The American Sign Language used in the school was created from French signs, 
Martha's Vineyard Science, and Home Science. Many students who first arrived were known as outcasts and looked at as being not intelligent in society. The school changed that and showed the world that they were just as smart as other kids. Some of this lack of understanding came from the fact that they had little hearing or no hearing and little communication skills before learning ASL or American Sign Language at the school. In his enthusiasm for the school and the sign language used there, Gallaudet stated, the heart claims its purcular and appropriate language that of the eye and countenance of the attitudes, movements, and gestures of the body. Clark became a co-founder of the school with Gallaudet. He also taught the students and educated each student for five years through the state law, only paying for each student to stay at the school for no more than five years. Writing was very important and was a big part of their education. Religion was front and center to their experience in learning. Boys started their morning with chapel. Students were required to learn vocation. Girls had to learn domestic skills like sewing, tailoring, and teaching. The boys learned coppering, shoemaking, metalwork, and farming work. They studied history, math, and science, and learned to be self-supported so they could eventually live on their own. Lunch was called dinner, and there's different food for all the days of the week. For example, on Sunday, they'd have roast pig, applesauce, steaks, and vegetables. On Monday, they would have soup, cold joint, calf heads, and vegetables. The school's population grew from a couple of dozen students in the 1800s to around 200 students in the 1900s. A major challenge in the 1900s was being continued by and developed to expand sign language education into other schools and states. A challenge with living in the school was illness and health as a result of epidemics. After World War II, there were a lot of great changes in technology used in the school. Real-time captioning helped learning at the school and in the world. This first school for the deaf has inspired over 40 other schools for the hearing impaired community to open up across the U.S. Following in pursuit of the American School for the Deaf, the second school to open up in the U.S. was the New York School for the Deaf. This school was founded by the New York State Education Department, and following in its trail was the Pennsylvania School for the Deaf, which opened up three years later. From 1843 to 1912, over 30 schools for the deaf were established by the deaf and hearing teachers from American School for the Deaf and Gallaudet College, including schools in Indiana, Tennessee, North Carolina, Illinois, Georgia, South Carolina, and Arkansas. Not only did it drive other schools to open up, but it caused a turning point in how people viewed the hearing impaired community. It went from the deaf and hard of hearing being viewed as a mental illness to people feeling them as experts on their own requirements, believing they should be respected and valued as individuals. This was a turning point in the education for the deaf community. Students who use ASL to communicate need to be able to see each other, design, and interact with each other. All the tables in the school are round, allowing the students and teachers to be able to see everyone. The hallways are wider, so students and faculty can walk side by side and see each other. Schools have also made special programs to benefit the hearing impaired community, like Aldet University. Our Deaf Studies program allows students to be at the forefront of research and exploration for the deaf and hard of hearing community. A diverse and well-published faculty ensures students enter the social and cultural climate of the deaf community with confidence and tools to advance the world's understanding of human diversity, says their overview page. Today, they have expanded further than schools for the deaf community. They have people who sign up performances, speeches, concerts, etc. Allowing the hearing impaired community to better experience shows, performances, speeches, and more. What happened to Alice? Alice attended the American School for the Deaf and was a very good writer. She was extremely intelligent and had many friends. Although she died young at 25, she stayed connected with the school after she left. She also did a lot of traveling. The American School for the Deaf was a turning point for the students and for the world as people began to see them as bright and capable. This school changed education for the deaf and positively impacted the world today.